Hi, my name is Owen Barnes from DS21 at the Data School. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a KPI card in just one worksheet using table calculations. Before we build our KPI card, let's just build out a simple table so we can understand how the last function can help us in getting the values we need. From the data pane, if we just right click and drag order date onto rows and select continuous months, and then just in the row shelf, convert this to discrete, we now have a nice table of all of the dates in our data set. And we can see that the values we want to be returning are December 2020 and November 2020. We want to get the sales for both of these values. If we just create a ad hoc calculation by double clicking on the row shelf and just typing in last, we now see that the view has changed and we just want to convert that ad hoc calculation we just created to discrete. And now we can see that the last function is zero at December 2020, and it's one at November 2020. And we can use these to just return these two values for sales. So on the data pane, if we just create a new calculated field, and we just call this current month sales, we want to say that if last equals zero, then return the sum of sales. And we need to make sure that we say sum of sales here, because last requires any value inside of the if statement to be aggregated. If we click OK and then just drag this into the view, we can see that only one value has been returned and that's for December 2020, which is what we want. We also want to do the same but for returning November 2020. So let's just create another calculated field and let's call this previous month sales. And we want to, similarly to before, say if last equals one this time, not zero, then return the sum of sales, end. And now if we click OK and show this, we can now see that we have the two values we want. But we need to just quickly make sure that we are locking in this calculation in the correct way. So on our measure values card, if we just click on the drop down and we edit the table calculation, we can see it's being calculated right now downwards. But we want to make sure that it's always being computed by the month of order date. So if you just select specific dimensions, it's just going to lock that table calculation in. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the other calculation as well. And now we want to find a way how we can compare these two values. If we want to return the percent difference from the previous, we need to take the December value and we need to subtract the November value. And then we want to divide that by the November value. That's going to give us our percent increase or decrease from previous. And we can use window calculations to help achieve this, considering that right now it wouldn't return any values because they're not present in each corresponding row. So if we just create a new calculated field here, and we want to call this difference, and then maybe a percentage, we need to first open a bracket. The reason we need to open the bracket is we need to compute the top part of our calculation first. So we need to subtract the two values first before we divide it by the previous month value. So if we just say window sum of our current month sales, we then want to subtract this from the window sum of our previous month sales. And then we just need to close off that bracket that we created earlier. And we want to divide this by the window sum of our previous month sales. If we click OK, and then we drag this into the view, we need to first make sure that we've computed it correctly. So on our measure values, on the difference calculation we just created, if we edit this and click specific dimensions and make sure month of order date is ticked. The final thing we need to do is, as you can see, it's returning zero across everything. And we need to change the number format because it's currently in a whole number, but we need it to be showing as a percentage. So if we go onto our data pane and we just find that calculation, if we right click and click default properties, and then number format. We now have the ability to change it to a percentage. I'm going to set it to one decimal place here. And now it's changed and we can see that it's actually gone down 29.2% from the previous month. One thing that we can do now is we can start to kind of build out our view a bit more. And the way that we can do this is first, I'm going to clean the sheet completely. And the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to right click order date and I'm going to drag this onto the columns. And I'm going to select continuous months here. I'm then going to bring sales into the rows. And now we have our line chart showing our sales over time. 
And now we need to bring all of the table calculations that we would like into our view. So we want to have the current month sales, the difference and the previous month sales. So I'm just going to drag these onto detail. And I just want to make sure that they're all being computed correctly. So I'm just going to check. Might need to re put these back in because the sheet was cleared, but it should still work anyway. So I'm just going to change all of these. And we're now ready to edit the title and get these values in. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to see the current month sales. And if I just click apply, the value for the current month, which was 83,829 is showing up. And now I might want to look at the percentage difference. So if I click insert and I look at the difference, I click apply. We can now see that that minus 29.2 is showing, which is what we want. And then we might want to say versus prior month and then insert our previous month sales. And if we click OK now, we can see that we have the foundation of our KPI card. We can now do maybe a bit of formatting. So if I just right click on the view and click format and on the left hand side here, if I just go to the right hand icon, which is just lines and then I just turn on my grid lines and then turn them back off. All of the grid lines have now been removed. The next few things that I can do is I can just remove the headers from the axis. So if I right click on the sales and untick show header and the same for the X axis. We now have that simple KPR, KPI card that we are desiring, but we might need to do a little bit more formatting. For example, you might want to add a up or down arrow here just to make it a bit more visually easy to understand. I hope you found this video useful on learning how to use table calculations to create a one worksheet KPI card. If you'd like to learn more about table calculations, I made a video on the first and last function, which is attached.